Hi everyone! Today we're going to see how to recreate this learning effect using Keyshot. To create the learning, I created this cylinder which has a little chamfer at the top and the chamfer is also, has also uh, two little fillets. So the first thing we're going to do with that is to separate the side from the top and bottom. So to do so, we're going to uh, right click on split object surface and then we're going to select the top and bottom and to split it. So at the moment, the threshold of the splitting angle is too high, so we're going to lower it to 10. And then we're going to select the top and control left click and the bottom. Split surface, apply. So now we have two different objects, the side and the top and bottom. And we are going to add we're going to change the material to metal. Here we can put aluminium, a bit of roughness, and then we can unlink the material of the side from the top and bottom, because we're going to only apply the knurling on the side. So right click and unlink material. So we're going to select the top one and call it top, and the side one we are going to call it side, like this. And now we're going to open the material graph. The first thing we need is a um, knurling texture. So I found mine on internet. I just typed knurl bump map and I choose to take this one. So import it after you've saved it by just drag, dragging and drop it into Keyshot. So you see that it created a node uh, text texture map. So we're going to press C to see um, how it looks, the preview of this texture on, on our cylinder. So at the moment we can't see anything because it's too big, so we're going to lower the size of our texture until we can see something, something like this. And then we can see that the mapping of the texture is not great, so this is because it's mapped as a box and we want it as a cylinder centered on the parts and you can click on move texture to see if it's correctly aligned with your with your cylinder so it is at the moment but if it's not you can uh, turn the gumball here in order to uh, map it uh, differently and we're going to apply this texture map with um, a geometry nodes uh, displacement and see what happens Remove the preview, go into the displacement node and lower the displacement height to 0.1 and then execute the geometry node. And here you can see that there are two main problems. So the first one is the fact that on the side, the geometry which has been produced is very different from uh, the actual uh, texture when we preview it. And this is because of the resolution of the displacement. So you can change this by going into triangle size and lower it to 0 0.01. And max triangle, you can add, you can move it from 6 million to maybe 15 million. And it's already much better. And then the other problem that we have is the transition between the top parts and the side parts. So as you can see it has it displaced this part but not this part because we didn't ask to and the transition is terrible. So in order to to remediate to this uh, problem we're going to combine this texture map with a um, gradient uh, map and have, having the texture map slowly fading towards uh, no displacement. So create a texture color gradient here and press C to see how it looks. So we want it to orient we want to orientate it not from one side to another one but from the top to the bottom. So you're going to move the texture, center on part, and rotate it like this. So make sure it's 90 degrees and also this cylinder is 10 millimeters so at, on the scale um, you can put 10 here. We are going to have on one side something like this and also on the other side. So we're going to create two other handles like this. 
here here you can put the black color and here the white one like this you bring this to the edge something like this you can maybe also have the black a bit bit off from the side like this and then you can remove the preview and we're going to combine the texture map with the color gradient so to do so we're going to use in utilities a color composite node so the source is going to be the color gradient and the background is going to be the texture map so if you preview with C the color composite node you can only see the color gradient and this is because we need to change the blend mode to multiply so in this way you can see that um, the texture fades towards the edge so let's try and apply the geometry nodes oh actually we need to connect the color composite to the displacement node here can move this here this apply and you see that we, we don't have um, the same problem anymore so now we can maybe modify a bit our uh, knurling texture to actually look like a proper uh, knurling like if it would have been machined into a lathe so first of all this needs to be a bit flatter because it's not as pointy in reality so on the texture map we can add a bit of brightness like this so in this way you will have uh, more white parts and so so this is going to be flat and we can lower the contrasts like this like this and also something we can change is the way um, the displacement is made so uh, um, applying a knurling on onto a piece of metal is not an additive process it, it's removing a material in the grooves so we need to invert the mapping the, we need to invert the displacement so we're going to add a color invert here like this and also the displacement will be negative so we are going to go into displacement height and put a negative number so minus 0 0.1 millimeter and now it should be something which is um, negative so if you would look exactly from the side you see that it removed material instead of adding it uh, as before so now with this setup, you can freely change uh, the size of your texture and it's always going to have this uh, smooth transition. So if you want a pattern which is smaller like this or something which is not square but maybe stretch diamond shapes like this, you can also do it like this. And then if you apply the geometry node, it's going to apply it perfectly with a transition at the top.